everyone doing? It's good to see you guys. Why don't you stand with us?
the same God who's never late is working all things out. You're working all things out. Yes, I will lift you high in the lowest valley. Yes, I will bless your name. Unless you come, will you meet? 
the sun is shaping the shadow In my weakness your glory
So it's 500 years since the Reformation of the Church. At that Reformation, lots of things began to change and now look quite different to what they were previously to that. As I look at the Great Commission of Jesus, he says, go and disciple nations. The church has been fantastic at evangelizing the planet. However, the part of discipling nations is now actually missing, and we now need to address that. How do we disciple nations? How do we get into society to bring heaven down to earth, to bring the values of the kingdom of God into the very fabric of society, into education, into business, into politics? I actually believe that the church needs to become more organic we love the organization of the church. We love the institution of the church. But going forward, it's going to be more organic, linked with organization, so that the kingdom of God can more flexibly pour through its members and have an impact in society. October of 98, I had the privilege of meeting Ian, and he shared an inspiring message of how we're to shape our world uh, by using kingdom principles. We wanted to plant 700 churches in 700 towns and cities where there are no evangelical churches. Ian Green was the guy who inspired us to do it. I am currently discipling CEOs of companies, people in politics, people in business, people in education. And I believe there is a great openness in the heart and mind of Christian leaders in the marketplace that want to be equipped want to be mentored, want to be coached on how the Kingdom of God can come through their area of influence. You can be a part of our team in actually establishing the mission of Jesus in the earth. We believe now is the time, it's a great opportunity. You can partner with us, you can help us financially, you can support us in prayer. Look at our website, iangreen.org. You will see what God is doing through our lives and through our ministry. And we want you to be a partner in that. Enjoy the harvest, see the mission of Jesus completed, and together we can have a global impact. We have a very special guest. It's been almost two years. Actually, it has been two years, more than two years since he's been here. Uh, he is an author. He is a church enabler. He's a leader uh, among leaders, in my opinion. And uh, he, he just he champions the church. He champions leadership within the church. And most importantly, he wants to see the kingdom of God come down to earth from heaven on, on, you know, until Jesus comes back for his church. And so I want it's with great pleasure, pleasure that I want to introduce to you uh, Ian Green. Good morning. It is just a real pleasure to be back with you at Vernon. It's, uh, yes, well over two years ago, I think two and a half years ago, I think it was March uh, 2019, had the opportunity to be with you. Um, I'm not sure if you, you are even aware, but I am one of the missionaries that you support on a, on a monthly basis. And um, so you may be wondering, well, what could you do? And, COVID was going on. Oh. God makes all things work together for good, right? And so we, have, we have, have done a lot of things, but one of the things that we're really excited about is I've been working with a group of people in Hungary, the Hungarian Gypsy Mission, um, and we, in September, um, we've been training through, through COVID and there's ongoing training too, but we released 25 community transformational groups across Hungary. So, so we used to call them, we used to call them church plants, but we needed to change the mind of uh, the Roma people because if you say church, they sing Sunday morning, singing, clapping, and casting out demons, right? Well, all that's really interesting and good, but we actually want the kingdom of God to come to the community and not just to the room that they meet on a Sunday morning. So we, we've changed the term from church plant to, to community transformational groups. We've changed the name from church planter to community transformer. And so 25 groups right across Hungary um, and we, we have put a process in place that they will multiply over the next 36 months. And so in 36 months' time, we think 
We think and believe in there could be 130 groups come out of the 25 groups. And so um, I want to thank you for I want to thank you for your support because without you helping people like me, I can't help those in Hungary, right? And so I, I know through COVID you remain consistent, you remain generous, you remain uh, committed. Like everybody else, we have we have to go to the supermarket, we have bills to pay. Uh, but your ongoing support through this time has been absolutely fantastic. So just wanted to share, there's a lot more I could share. Um, if you go to my website, iangreen.org, you'll see a lot of stuff on there, and hopefully that will give you some indication of um, how you're investing in the lives of people uh, predominantly in Europe. Um, I've brought some resources with me. Some of you may be new and you didn't have the opportunity to get them last time, but you know, my heart is to see the kingdom of God come and transform Vernon. This, by the way, I really like what you've done to this building. Wow. I mean, come on, wow. This is so beautiful. It's so welcoming. The foyer with the glass doors, blinking. Awesome, guys. I just, just say that for free. That's just fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. But th th so, so it's great when we meet people in the community, we not, they, they come in and they'll feel comfortable. This is like become a normal building, not an archaic church building, right? We do what we have to do with, with what we have, and you've done a fantastic job here, and, 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 and I want to thank you for your generosity because I know that would have cost money and time and energy to do that. But my heart is, if people stumble in here and find Jesus, that's a great thing. But there are people all over Vernon who are ready right now to receive Jesus, but they're not coming to the building. Did you hear that? They're not coming to the building. So Jesus says, go. We often say, come. We go to where they are, right? We go to where they are. And so th there's a series of teachings that I do here called uh, Transforming Communities. Transforming Communities. And if you didn't pick that up last time I was here, really want to encourage you to get a copy of that. There's about 14 hours of teaching on this little widget here, which will, will help you and to understand the trajectory which I believe you are going as a church. There are other, res there's other resources there, um, how to have an innovative spirit, how to be creative when you feel stuck, how do you get out of that? And so there's a whole load, load of stuff there. If you buy any two of these today, then we give you my book, absolutely free, checking into faith. That's $25 if you go to Amazon. Um, and so these are normally 79, two is 149, but you get a free book as well. And that all helps me to, to resource the people that we are trying to help in Eastern Europe. And so trust that will be a blessing to you and hope that you will take advantage of that. Um, I want to talk to you today about manifesting the goodness of God. Manifesting the goodness of God. So, um, in, if you have a Bible, you can turn with me to Romans chapter 15 and verse 14. And I'm going to read a few verses for you. I am fully convinced, dear brothers and sisters, that you are full of goodness. Have you got that? You are full of goodness. Sometimes you feel full of guilt. Sometimes you feel full of fear. Sometimes you feel full of apprehension. Sometimes you may even feel full of anger. But God speaks over your life today, and he says, you are fully loaded with goodness. You know these things well, and you're able to teach others about them. Even so, I've been bold enough to emphasize some of these points, knowing that all you need is this reminder from me. For I am, by God's grace, a special messenger from Christ Jesus to the Gentiles. I bring you good news and offer up as a fragrant sacrifice so that you might be pure and pleasing to him by the Holy Spirit. For it is right for me to be enthusiastic about what Christ has done through me in my service to God. I dare not boast about anything else. I have brought the Gentiles to God by my message, by the way that I lived before them. I've won them over with miracles done through 
through, through, through the power of the Holy Spirit. I have fully presented the good news of Christ. I'll just stop there. So, the game plan is this, people. <laughs> the game plan is, how do we get the goodness of God that's inside of us, out of us? So, we have been to the doctor. We've been to Dr. Jesus. We have been healed. We have been forgiven. We have been restored. We have been blessed. Stage one. But what has happened inside of us, how do we get that into the lives of other people. And so the Apostle Paul says here, I did this in three ways. This is how we manifest the goodness of God. He says, I manifest the goodness of God through my mouth, through what I said. Do you know what? Goodness comes out of your mouth. Not always. <laughs> but goodness, the tongue, the mouth, is a powerful tool for goodness and hope and faith and encouragement and affirmation to come out of our mouths. Of course, the Apostle Paul, he was a preacher. He declared the, the, the goodness of God through his preaching. But sometimes, sometimes the Bible says in the Acts of the Apostles, he went from house to house declaring the good news of God. So here we are coming into winter. Hopefully the, restriction, the, current, the restrictions won't hinder us any further. But, but winter is an awesome time to invite people to your home. Everybody's bored. After you've watched the hockey on a Monday night, it's done. What else is there to do? Homes are like fishing boats for the gospel. In our normal, in our, in our historical thinking, we have thought this room is the fishing boat. But this room, for lots of people in Vernon, is too difficult for them to come into this room. It's too difficult. It's too, it's, it's a gigantic step, right? They're not religious, they're not Christian, they may be atheistic, they, they may have issues with God. Right, but if you invited them to your home, how good would that be? And when you invite them to, to your home, don't preach at them. Manifest the goodness of God to them. Speak to them with kind words. Affirm them in the good things that you see. Oftentimes we, we're looking for things, bad things that people are doing, but with our mouths, we can begin to speak the words of God. We can begin to build a pathway in, into their lives. And we can begin to arrest them with the good news of Jesus Christ. And our mouths is a powerful tool to bring the goodness of God. So who's ever in your world, begin to bring the goodness of God. Begin to not catch them doing things wrong. Catch them doing things right and affirm them. Because as you begin to do that, you will build a road into their lives. The Apostle Paul said this, I, through my mouth, brought the goodness of God. Will you bring the goodness of God through your mouth? Affirm, encourage, provoke the kindness through your mouth. Then the second thing he said was this, I manifested the goodness of God through my actions. I, I think in the uh, King James Version it says, through, through my deeds, um, through my labor, through, through my work. And it's quite interesting, the word that is actually used there. It's the same word found in Matthew 5 and verse 16, which it says, they will know your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. It's a business term. So for those of you who are still at work, you can manifest the goodness of God in your everyday life at work. At work. I had a really unfortunate experience this week. The brother's no longer with us, but he was a very significant business person in Kelowna. Huge, huge developer, very generous with his profits, 
to see the kingdom go forward, but very harsh with his workplace, with the people in the workplace. I would say that's a problem. So there, are, there were people under his influence and under his care, seven or eight hours a day, they couldn't see Jesus in him because he was harsh, he was negative, he was intimidating. He, he, in every deal he went into, he had to win. It could never be a win-win, he had to win. Let me tell you, that's not the kingdom of God. That's not the kingdom of God. And actually, that's not even good business. <laughs> that's not even good business. But in our everyday place at work, we bring the kingdom of God. We bring goodness. We do stuff that will actually enable people to see Jesus at work in our world. Now, many of you will know about the Methodist denomination. The Methodist denomination, um, in the first 50 years of their existence, had led about 30,000 followers to Jesus. I think it was 30. Yeah, 30,000 followers to Jesus. And John, John and Charles Wesley said, this is, this, is going too, this is going too slow. This is going too slow. We have to do some, we, have, we need another strategy. And they brought in another strategy, and it was this. We're going to make doing good fashionable. We're going to make doing good fashionable. And so, you will know in the Methodist movement, most Methodist church would have a Sunday school next to the church. I'm sure it's the same here in Canada. It's the same almost all over the world. But it wasn't to teach the Bible. It wasn't a Sunday school class that we would have to, to learn about the Bible. It was actually to get children who were working on the fields or in the mines, and they would, they would invite them to come on a Sunday afternoon, and they would teach them English and arithmetic and, and basic learning skills so that eventually they could actually come out of poverty and get a job. And while they were doing that, for four or five hours on a Sunday afternoon, the last hour, they taught them the Bible. And in the next 50 years, those 30,000 people went to 1 million people because they were manifesting the goodness of God in a tangible and in a practical way. That's how I got saved. That's how I came to Jesus. So I came to Jesus a little while ago, over 50 years ago. I know that shocks you. You can't even believe I'm 50. I know that, I understand. Um, but I'm from a small Welsh village, and um, three or four villages from me, there was a couple, they wanted children, and they wanted children for a long time, maybe 15 years. And some of the stuff that's available today wasn't available in those days. And eventually, uh, Sylvia fell pregnant, and they were absolutely, absolutely excited, absolutely excited. And Andrew was born, and it was just tremendous joy. But when Andrew was four, he was playing outside on his tricycle. He fell off his tricycle, banged his head on the edge of the curb, and went into a coma and never woke up. It was devastating for this couple, utterly devastating for the couple. The guy worked in a, in a company, it was like JCB, a company like JCB, but it was hydraulic machinery, and, and uh, there was a new, new born again Christian there. Kevin Gould, and Kevin began to share with him, and, and Mac didn't want to know. He was mad. He was absolutely mad. He was ang angry with everybody, right? Angry with everybody. And the local Baptist minister's wife decided to visit the family just to sit and listen and not to preach. She just kept on turning up every other day and allowed them to vent their anger. Sometimes there were words that weren't very nice that was being said, coming out, pouring out like a torrent. Kept on coming back, kept on coming back. And eventually, Mac, Mac gave his life 
his life to Jesus. It was such a dramatic change that when he went back to work, everybody knew. I mean, even before this, Mac on a good day was an ugly person. Right? He, he was like horrible anyway, but that just made him super horrible. When he came back, it's like as if he's walking around on air. And people can't understand what's going on. He says, what's, what's, what's up with you? He says, well, I don't know. He says, something's happened to you. Yeah, I've become a follower. No, you couldn't become a follower of Jesus. You couldn't. No, no, no. No, no, I am. I've become a follower of Jesus. Well, Mac led one of his colleagues to the Lord. His colleague was the youth leader of the youth club that I used to go to, a Methodist youth club. And the youth leader, he was immoral, he was on drugs, but he was our youth leader, right? And he, dra he dramatically got saved. And it'd be 130, 140 kids on a Friday night, on a Saturday night. It's just, he, he's bold, he's strong, he's sharing his faith. And we thought it was a bit of a joke. I thought it was a bit of a joke. And so we kind of could rag him. And now he couldn't beat us up because he was a Christian. And Christians didn't do those kind of things. And, 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 and Andy shared his faith with me. And after three or four months of arguing, debating, I surrendered my life to Jesus. And within six months, 60, 60, 60 of my friends gave their lives to Jesus Christ. What happened? Baptist lady, Baptist pastor's wife, kept showing kindness and goodness, not preaching, listening, feeling the pain, offering support, not pulling the Bible out, not saying that this is what the Word says, blah, blah, blah. Because you know in those situations, there's absolutely no answers. And if you think you're clever to come up with some answers, you are very mistaken. There's no answers. You have to absorb the pain. And there's, all, there's people in all of our lives, right, like that. Maybe they've not had a child that's died, but they've had tragedy. Maybe they've had divorce. Maybe they've had bankruptcy. Maybe they've been betrayed by their partner. And we are carriers of goodness. We are carriers of goodness. And we let the goodness of God come out of our lives to bring healing and hope. And eventually, we will get that opportunity to have a conversation about Jesus. But don't start there. Let the kingdom come. The Bible says... Wherever, wherever the power of the Holy Spirit, there is love and joy and peace. I would add to that goodness and kindness and mercy and love. The Apostle Paul said this, I brought the goodness of God through my mouth. I brought the goodness of God through my hands. And now he says, I brought the goodness of God through supernatural manifestations he says i did signs and wonders in the name of jesus christ now i'm thinking this is a pentecostal church like i may be wrong but i'm thinking right it's a pentecostal church is that is that correct so i'm thinking we actually believe in miracles yeah, yeah we believe it right we, we're up for it right we, we believe in miracles and we can have an expectation Maybe it's a long time, but we can, we can renew our expectation that the God of the impossible can do miracles through our life, right? Can do miracles through our life. And so the Apostle, said, Apostle Paul says this. The Apostle Paul says this. I did signs and wonders by, by the power of the Holy Spirit. By, and we do every miracle is by the power of the Holy Spirit. It's not our spirituality. It's not how holy we are. It's not how perfect we are. It's all by the Holy Spirit. You know, some years ago, we were planting churches in, um, in the Ukraine. And uh, we, we were planting them in some Muslim communities. And it was really hard yakka. You know, we'd kind of do a traditional open air and, and people start throwing rocks at you. That's not encouraging. That, that's... <laughs> That's absolutely not encouraging, right? And so 
the church planter and his wife, uh, Sasha and Nastasha, um, said, we need another strategy. We need another strategy. We need to do something different. And so they, they went away for three days and fasted and prayed. And they came back and, and, and Natasha said, I, I think I got the word of the Lord. I think we need to offer to wash, wash people's clothes. That doesn't sound brilliantly strategic or holy, does it? So they, they started to go from house to house, and they were actually from Russia, and so they would be like immigrants into the Ukraine. And they began to knock on the door, says, we're Sasha and Nastasha, we're from, you know, Moscow, wherever. And one of the things we love doing, we love washing clothes. Would you have any clothes that we could wash? So the, the first question was, and you bring them back? <laughs> And so they say, yeah, yeah, we bring the mark. You have to provide the detergent, but we do the washing, right? So, so they're kind of doing this. And of course, it's genius, right? Because every two weeks, they pick up the clothes. Two or three days later, they take the clothes back. So they start to build relationships with all these people that they're washing clothes for, right? Which has been awesome. Anyway, they, they're helping a lady called Aaliyah. Aaliyah has five children under eight. Her husband's away in Germany trying to make some money to feed the family. She's seven months pregnant. And she's, she's, she's coming up to get them ready to give birth. And they think there's some complications. She doesn't know. She's worried. She's got these five kids. So Sasha and Nastasha said, look, you, Aaliyah, you need to go into the hospital We'll camp here with your children. We'll look after each other and it'll be fine. And so she goes into hospital to have the baby. And there is complications. And after she's given birth, she goes into a coma. Then she picks up a hospital bug. And she's in a coma for over 21 days. And, and the nursing staff are worried, they're concerned. Natasha and Sasha are concerned. Natasha's going to the hospital, sitting by her bed every day, saying, God, just do something. Just break through. And then Natasha's there one morning, and the doctor comes, and he says, tomorrow, we turn off the machine. So what do you mean you turn off the machine? Yeah, yeah, no more money. She has no more money. We turn off the machine. So you can't turn off the machine. We've got a little baby here. We've got five kids at home. You can't turn off the machine. No, no, tomorrow, 9 o'clock, we turn off the machine. Finished. Well, Natasha, 23, she's absolutely gutted, gutted. She's walking away from the hospital, heavy-hearted, gets back to the apartment, says to Sasha, Sasha, tomorrow the hospital is going to kill Aaliyah. They're turning off the machine. Sasha said, we need to pray. Let's gather a few people to pray. And they got what, two or three Muslim people had come to Jesus, and they came together to pray, and it was 10 o'clock in the morning. And they prayed till 10 o'clock at night. They stopped, had some soup, had some bread, prayed right through till 6 o'clock in the morning. And then some people had to go off to work, and... And, Sa and Natasha's getting herself ready to go down to the hospital, very fearful. She gets there at 8.30, she's fearful. She's walking down the corridors, wondering what the heck she's going to find. And, and through that all-night all prayer meeting, they'd prayed two prayers. One was, God, change the doctor's mind, or two, bring a supernatural miracle to Aaliyah. And she got to where the ward was. She came around the corner, and there's Aaliyah sitting up in bed, eyes open. She says, I'm hungry, like a typical woman, right? I'm, hu I'm hungry. I need food. Well, she hadn't eaten for three weeks, right? The nurses start freaking out because they've only seen her horizontal for three, 21 days, right? So they're all freaking out. They go, we need to go to the doctor, get a doctor, get a doctor. So you know, the doctor comes does some examinations. Two hours later, comes back, says, look, I like this when an atheistic doctor says this. <laughs> he says, we're really not sure what has happened. It looks like a miracle. 
How good is that? And if she progresses, she can leave you in, in two to three days' time. Well, she did leave. She got home. Everybody's really excited. They have a little boy, little boy, Sergi. He's, uh, he's four, and he loves football. You know, this is like proper football. Not that silly football south of the border, like proper football, you know. Um, but he's got a disjoint in his uh, hip, and they're not going to... They're not going to fix it till he's seven or eight, they say, you know. And so, Aaliyah, she's just had this miracle. She says, Sergi, come, come sit on my lap. Put the baby to one side. She just prays a simple prayer. She says, Jesus, like you fixed me, fix Sergi. Thank you. He jumps up and he goes, Mom, Mom, all the pain's gone. See ya. Goes out playing football in heaven for five and a half hours, and then, come, <laughs> and then comes home. See, I believe, I believe God is ready to do miracles. Are you ready for him to do a miracle through you? Are you ready? Because he's ready. We sometimes think we're waiting for him. No, no, he's actually waiting for us. Like he's, he's waiting for us. And anybody ever been in the supermarket and you get a feeling, you see maybe someone limping along with a, with a trolley, and you get a feeling, maybe I should go and pray for them. Ever had, anybody ever had that kind of a feeling before? And you've managed to get rid of it, haven't you? You managed to say to yourself, oh, that's so stupid, oh. How can I be praying for someone and save on food? That's ridiculous, you know. And you, you, talk, you talk yourself out of it, right? So the miracle was left on the shelf. What about if we took the miracle off the shelf? What about if we took some humility and we said, hey, do you mind if I pray for you? Do you mind if I say a prayer for you? I've got, I've got two minutes to go into that, right? I'll tell you one quick, one quick story. So my son, he's 23 years, 23 years of age. He lives in London, got married five weeks. So prior to getting married, of course, he had to do his own shopping, washing, looking after himself. He's in the supermarket. It's a supermarket called Tesco. It's like a save on food. It's a really big, big setup. And uh, as he's in line, he sees the, the checkout guy. He looks like he's in a lot of pain, right? A lot of pain. And as he comes up, you know, putting his um, food through the scanner, he says, mate, you, you look like you're in a lot of pain. He says, oh, I am. He says, these chairs are hopeless. They don't support your back. He says, oh, he says, mate, I'm a follower of Jesus. And the guy kind of looked, you know, in disdain. He said, do you, mind, do you mind if I say a prayer for you? So, oh, whatever, whatever. So Morg just says, Jesus, do your stuff. Thank you. The guy goes, what was that? What was that? Well, he says, you tell me what it was. He says, mate, warm liquid went through my body and all the pain left. What was that? He says, well, that's the Jesus we're talking about, right? He says, obviously, we can't talk now. There's a huge queue here, right? But you're on, you're on next Thursday? I'll come next Thursday. I'll come a bit earlier. I'll tell you some more. I'm thinking Jesus is up for it. Are you up for it? Are you up for it? He says, I showed the goodness of God through signs and wonders by the power of the Holy Spirit. Let me tell you, ladies and gentlemen, this morning, you are fully loaded. You are fully loaded with goodness. And the goodness that's in you needs to come out of your mouth, out of your hands, and through your life with supernatural signs and wonders. Amen? Let's just pray for a moment. I think, I get a feeling you this morning. I get a feeling you this morning that you want goodness to come out of your life. You know that you're blessed to be a blessing. And if you say, Ian, I just need some more courage, 
just need to be a little more sensitive to what the Holy Spirit is doing. And I just want Jesus to help me to let goodness come out of my life a lot more. And if that's you, just, just stand with me this morning because I want to pray a prayer for you, right? I want to pray a prayer for you. If you're saying, I want more goodness to come out of my life, out of my mouth, out of my hands, through the power of the Holy Spirit, somehow, and I'm just needing a little more courage, a little more confidence, a little more obedience to the promptings of the Holy Spirit so that we can become a supernatural, natural people. So Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you for these phenomenal people in this room this morning. I thank you've brought them to this house, you've attached them to this body, and Lord, they are already being shaped for the kingdom of God to flow through their lives into this community, into their neighborhood, into their street, into their apartment block, into their business, into their company. And so, Father, we pray this morning, fresh boldness, sensitivity, and confidence in the Holy Spirit for you to do what you promised to do. And everybody said, Amen. God bless you. God bless you.